Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on multicast. Let's start our part 2. Now it's important for us to know the mapping between the layer 3 to layer 2 MAC address. All right. Now it's important for us to know this because of this. So assuming that I have a source, all right, uh, my multicast source. Let's say my multicast source is 224.1.1.1 and I have two multicast source group. And let's say I have 224.255.1.1. So I have two multicast source here connect to a layer 3 and the layer 3 connect to layer 2. Now assuming that the layer 2 connect to three different PC connected to the interface 1, interface 2 and interface 3. All right, so these are the PC that they connect to. Now, assuming that PC1 and PC2 would like to uh, subscribe from 224.1.1.1 and PC3 would like to subscribe from 224.255.1.1. Now, in this case, the switch need to know the MAC address as well as the port. All right, so if I have the port number 1 and number 2, I should have a MAC address as in the group of 224.1.1.1 and if I have port number 3 that's connected to PC3 I should have 224.255.1.1 so it's important for us to change or into in this case to map a layer 3 to a layer 2 right so that is the theory behind that why we need to change a layer 3 to a layer 2 all right, because the layer 2 device need to know that which multicast group that you subscribe to. Now come the second question. How are we going to do that? Now for us to calculate this uh, layer 3 to layer 2, what we need to do is look into some example. Let's say now I have 224.1.1.1. This is a layer 3. If I convert into a layer 2, what I need to do is 001005E is already fixed. Then we have a remaining 23 bit. Right? So what we need to do here is that we take the 23 bit from the low bit order. So I have 8 bit here, 8 bit here, I have a 7 bit over here. So that will give us the 23 bits. So if let's say we do a conversion, so if let's say I have 1, I will convert into a hex number become like this okay so this is the one here so this is the the other one okay and this is the last one so what will happen here is become the hex number become 01-01-01 so to complete this it become 01-00-5e-01-01-01 so that will be the mapping between a layer 3 to a layer 2 now let's say now I'm going to use 224.255.1.1 alright using the similar concept 8 bit 8 bit 7 bit over here so if I'm getting 255 I'm converting into the binary it will become 1111 one 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 okay so these two I just do a conversion so it's become uh, zero 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 one dot zero 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 one now when I change this into the hex number remember I only need to change seven bit this bit is zero okay so this bit is zero so what I have here in hex number is really only this three so that will be seven okay so this is all one it will be F and here I have 01-01 so if I turn this into the layer 2 it's become 01005E 7F-01-01 so this is how I do a conversion but there's only one thing if I'm going to do a one more here, 224.127.1.1, what will happen then? 
All right, so again, I'm going to change the first, the last 23 bit. Okay, now 127, if you convert into the binary, you will get 0111111. So behind over here is the same. All right, so if we do this conversion, 0 is reserved already. So this is 7, this is F, this is 0, 1, 0, 1. Isn't that 224.127.1.1 is 01005E, 7F0101. It's exactly just like the previous one of 224.255.1.1, which also give us 01005E, 7F0101. So now these two will be overlapping. Okay, so this is what we don't want. So here we have 2 to the power 5, which is 32 IP address stasis overlapping. So please remember that um, in theory, uh, there are IP address that you cannot just simply plug and play. So when you design your multicast, you have to design in such a way that the, the last 23 bit have to be unique. Okay. Now another component that we should look into when we talk about multicast is IGMP and PIM. IGMP stands for Internet Group Management Protocol. Now in this diagram, PC1 in this case is of a receiver. All right. Want to run or want to subscribe the multicast. So this application will run some sort of IGMP to signal to R1 mentioning that PC1 need to join to a certain multicast group. So here we are using IGMP to signal to R1. Now R1 in return that's facing to the upstream will use a protocol independent multicast. Now protocol independent multicast is a multicast uh, protocol that run on top of unicast. All right, so that is where we have the independent here. Independent referring to it can be RIP, it can be OSPF, it can be any other of any of the IGP. It doesn't really matter. This is where we have a protocol independent multicast, which means that PIM do rely on the underneath uh, unicast routing for PIM to work. So here we have the PIM protocol independent multicast and IGMP that allowed the user to subscribe to the sender. Okay. Now in certain, certain situation, they may have the layer two switch that doesn't run multicast. So for such an instance, we are going to run IGMP snooping. And IGMP snooping normally will snoop in a VLAN. Let's say this is a VLAN 2. So we are going to enable IGMP snooping in this VLAN to snoop uh, the traffic between a PC to the router and the router to the PC so that they can create a multicast table. All right, that is based on that layer 2. So here we have the IGMP snooping. Now let's look into the IGMP in detail now. So let's look into the IGMP now. First, we are going to look into the IGMP overview. Then we are going to look into different version of IGMP, which are version 1, 2, and 3. Then we are going to look into the interoperability between different version of IGMP. And finally, uh, we end with the IGMP source specific multicast mapping. Now, generally, what exactly is IGMP and what is it used for? Now, IGMP defines how to maintain a group membership between host and multicast router. Now, in this diagram, you can see that I have three different uh, receiver. All right, this receiver might want to join two different uh, multicast group. Let's say, for example, PC1 and PC2 want to join to one of the multicast group, and PC3 want to join to a different multicast group. So PC1 and PC2 using certain application that is installed in their PC will signal to router 1 saying that they want to join to one of the group. Let's say it's 224.1.1.1 and PC3 want to go for 224.2.2.2. So how this PC want to signal the router 1 to, to, so that the R1 will signal to the source? And the way they do that is using IGMP. All right. Whereas R1 
that's sending to the source is using PIM. And for us to do that, we have three different versions, version 1, version 2, and version 3. Now let's look into the version 1 first. IGMP version 1. Now IGMP version 1 have two messages. First message is called general query, and the other one is called report. Now general query is sent by the querier to the broadcast network. Okay, now the broadcast network upon receiving is going to send a report. Now let's look into the query process. In here, I have two different router, router 1 and router 2. Now if let's say I do have two different routers as is in one broadcast network, one of these will be elected as the querier. And in version 1, the way to select the querier is by protocol independent multicast. The one where we have a DR will also become the querier. All right, so it depends on the PIM. Okay, now since I already have a querier, querier is going to send a query into the network. PC1, PC2, and PC3, these are receiver. Receiver upon receive a query is going to send back a report. Right, now in this case, PC1 and PC2, they want to join to the same group. This is group 1. Okay, and PC3 want to join to group 2. Now when PC1 send a report back into the uh, router, either P, uh, R1 and R2, now PC2 also receive this report at the same time. Now since both of these router, or in this case the receiver, want to join to the same group, PC2 will withhold the report and only PC1 report will get sent to both R1 and R2. The reason PC2 withhold this report is because that there is no reason for two of these reports sent to the router at the same time based on the same group. Okay, so that is the report. And PC3 send the report to R1 and R2 because that uh, there isn't have any receiver interested on the group number two. Okay, now what will happen here is if let's say now I have another PC join in. So I have a PC4 want to join in for group number three. Now when PC4 want to join to the group number three, it will signal an IGMP report immediately to the router. In this case, these are my multicast router without even receive the query because it will be more efficient before I actually wait for the query, I will just send a report because I already received a signal saying that I want to join to group 3. So that is the efficiency built on the version 1. Now what will happen if let's say PC4 now remove or in this case shut down. Now R1 will send a query. Okay, now if let's say this query is not being uh, replied by the report because now the PC4 just leave. Now if let's say there isn't have any report for a certain period of time, then I automatically will prune the multicast group. So group 3 will prune after certain period of idle time out. And this is IGMP version 1. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.